Hey guys, so I wanted to do a video on the uh, October canning seamer, or can seamer, I guess is the better way of saying it. Um, had a couple of guys ask in the comments about uh, why I went with October compared to the All-American and compared to the cannular. Um, took some time, probably about five or six months, and really researched, looked at blogs, looked at different blogs and different uh, Reddit versus reviews, those types of things. And just kind of read through what people were saying about different things. Um, again, this is this is something if you're going to make a investment in your brewery to really uh, upgrade into cans, it, it's not cheap. I get that. Uh, but if you're going to be shipping beer, it's so much easier with cans than it is to bottles. Um, I don't worry about breakage and those types of things. Um, it really takes care of a lot of those types of uh, concerns and anxieties that, that go along with bottles. Um, I don't have any issues in terms of failures. Um, the cans do a great job in terms of keeping their carbonation and uh, and really I've been very, very happy with it. So uh, I've had the October can seamer. This is the SL1 for a little more than a year now, probably about, uh, probably pushing 16 months or so. I'm on my third case of cans, um, gone through them. I think I've had two failures. I think I talk about that in uh, a little bit down the line here. I'll show you some of the information that I've go through. Uh, I think I've had two failures, all operator error, nothing to do with the, the can seamer itself. That's more on me and just not doing it correctly. Uh, something I could dire directly relate back to something I made a mistake with. So um, overall though, been very, very happy with it. Uh, I looked at the cannular. Um, Price-wise, it's cheaper. Definitely a little bit easier to get into. One of the biggest concerns I had was is in terms of making sure that the seal happens correctly and there's not any issues. Um, I saw a lot, a lot of people talk about having to 10, 15, 20 cans to get the, the seam to work correctly. Um, and it made me a little bit concerned about it, going, I, I don't I don't want to be in a situation that the the cans have any any chance of failure. If I'm going to spend the money on this and I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. I don't want to be in a situation that it, it's got a, a shot of being, you know, storing it or shipping it and not being being right. Uh, All American is a hand crank system to start with. You can upgrade into a electric system and be able to have it set, and that has an automatic system, so it'll do operation one and then operation two, and it basically, as the flywheel goes. It's, it does operation one and then operation two on its own and then comes back. If I have the ability to, I will, I'll link in uh, Gary, a main brew guy, does a great job of, he set his up with a uh, with an electric motor and a flywheel and really shows you exactly how it goes, how it gets back to the same spot. Um, but either way, as you look at it, what I finally came up with, and again, this is my opinion and why I decided, decided to go with October uh, can seamer in the SL1 has nothing to do with, with uh, the other two items being or other two products being bad. I just made the decision if I was going to spend somewhere in that seven to eight to nine hundred dollar range that I wanted something out of the box to be ready to go. I'm not dealing with setting up feelers and, and making sure that the seams are right. I want the seams to be right. Am I spending almost a thousand dollars? I shouldn't have to worry about the seams not being correct. I don't also want to have to hand crank it if I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to flip a switch, put the can in there, can it, seam it, and be ready to go. If I got a couple of buddies over and they're like, hey, that's a really great beer. Can I take a, a pint home? I can throw a can in there, pull it out of the pint or pull it out of the tap, throw it the sealer, put it on there, and then hand it to them and they, they walk away. Um, I just, I wanted something that's going to be a, a turnkey type of situation. I didn't want to have to do a lot of work afterwards. Um, and a lot of the things I do in my brewery are a DIY type of thing. If I have things that are um, items that I can I can make multi-use, that I can save money on, I'm all for that. But I'm also a guy that's going to look at it and say, if I'm going to spend a significant amount of money for it, then I want it that, that item to work the way it's supposed to. And I don't want to have to do a lot of work with that. I want it to be something that it can work seamlessly without a problem and be able to work down the line. So... When I finally came down to it, I looked at a couple of things. One, it's American made, so it's a product that's made in the country that's a small business that I can support here. Two, it has electric ability to be able to be a, an automatic seamer. I'm not having to hand crank it. 
I'm not having to, to put myself in a situation that I'm going to have to check the seams over and over. Um, when I start looking at the three main products I looked at, Cannular, All American, and October, it just had the best of both worlds. Again, this is not a cheap thing to get into. So if you're looking for uh, something that's a uh, jump in at a, at a bottom line, the cannula is probably going to be your best bet. But some things you have to consider would be the chuck for a 12 ounce compared to 16 ounce. That's an expense. They don't have the power cable that you have to buy that as an extra accessory. Um, so as you get into it, you're probably looking in the 500 to 600 dollar range. Um, the All American, based off of the high gravity website, and I'll try to place all this information in here as I go through it. So you can make your own decisions, um, depending on whether you want the flywheel, you want the hand crank, you want the electric. You can go anywhere from that $700 range up to $2,000. So it just didn't make a lot of sense to me when I thought about this and some of the reviews I've seen. Out of the box, it's ready to go. I don't have to deal with it. It's set to go. And, uh, you know, the, a lot of the issues that people talk about don't come up with the October. Um, again, expense-wise... Cans probably run me somewhere in the range of, depending on shipping, about $110, $120. Um, That's for 16-ounce cans. I think there's 173 cans that come in the case. Um, If I was doing 12-ounce cans, I think it's 200 and some odd. So, depends on what you're looking to do with it. Um, But for me, I was looking at this as the ability uh, competitions, the SJ Poor competition, uh, beer mails, those types of things, to be able to send that out to people and not have a uh, concern with it, it really worked for me. Um, the cans, there were some reviews that I had out there going, what happens if these cans for cannular no longer are are produced? The cans for October are a standard can. They're a 16 ounce with a standard B64 end that you can get in a lot of different places. I happen to buy mine in October because I know they work for that that system. But you can buy those in a lot of different places. eBay has them. There's some different spots out there. Depending on cost and where you go with that, you can do some different things with it. So as I looked at it, it just made a lot of sense in terms of what I was at, why I went with October. So hopefully the next couple pieces of this video kind of take you through what my process is. There are some of the reasons why I went with this um, in a review of the system itself. All right, guys. So here is my canning system. This is the October SL1. Um, I'm going to go through and give a pretty good overview of exactly what it does. And then I'll show you my system for canning and how I go through. But um, I spent a decent amount of time because obviously this is going to be a pretty, uh, pretty big investment if you decide to get into canning. There's no real cheap way of getting into it. So if you decide to do this, I spent a decent amount of time going through and trying to figure out what was the best for at least my system. And I figured I'd give you uh, my opinions and and what I looked into, what I read, and just some of the information around it. So so up close, this is what you get. It is a single arm, so both operations are done on the one lever. Uh, This is set up currently for 16 ounce. Um, You do get an extra chuck. That's that white top right there on the counter. If you want to go to a 12 ounce, there's the ability to go to stubby eight ounces, but you have to get a different chuck for that. It doesn't come with the system, but you can, with this system, go between 12 and 16 ounce cans. They are the standard cans. I believe it's B64 ends, uh, but those are standard. Uh, you can get it right through October or you can find it from some other places. And can, cans obviously are an added, added cost, uh, but if it's something you're interested in getting into. Uh, simple operation. One of the things I do like about it is there's not a lot of moving parts in terms of things that can go wrong. So it's not push buttons. It's very simple toggles. So just an easy, very simple with that. Really good size motor. I'll get you up close so you can see some of the specs if you're interested in looking into that. If you're going to nerd out at all, give you some information with that. So the motor is on the back of it. Uh, it's got a cowling over the top. So obviously it's a belt drive system that goes through here. Uh, easy to take this off, just a single uh, screw right here. Take the cowling off. This is a plastic cowling, uh, but you, if you needed to get in there, it's simple to take that off and get into it. Um, up front operation. So the can would sit right into this. The chuck 
comes up to the top, excuse me, the chuck is here, but this is a stopper here on the back. The can sits against that and then comes right up into this portion here that sits on the top of that can. And then you have two operations of the seamers here. I'll show you in a second. This is very simple. You put the can right on this chuck and just simply slide this up. This locks into place once a can's in. It will not lock into place uh, without a can there. This will rotate so you can get it out of way or wherever it makes most sense for you. Uh, this is all really easy to take out. Just simple pins here to be able to pull another pin there. This whole chuck will come up and out. You can clean it, take it apart. I can show you those parts and pieces that are there as well. In terms of operations, let's see if I can get a good up close here for you. Inside, so you have two seamers. Both operations happen uh, from those two seams. So as a can would be into this, it comes up through, sits flush against this. You turn the switch on, you are going to go all the way to the outside. So that is operation one. Hold it for a second, two seconds, and then come back across. Get my hand out of the way for you. And then this is the second operation. Hold for one, two, and then come back to basically as you're looking at it, it will come back to almost dead center position. And what that does is open up that space right in between there. So then the can seamed, turn it back off, brings the can back down, lock it back into or out of place, and then you can remove the can out of there. Um, I like the fact that it's not uh, two different operations. Uh, you don't have to worry about going back and forth. Um, some of them, see them, they've got two handles on either side. So one operations on one side, one operations on the other side for the seaming. Um, this is very simple. Again, just simply out, across, and back. And then the can's done and it's seamed up. Um, you can see what I've been doing here. I've been canning, uh, trying to get some stuff ready for shipments. Uh, got some beer uh Beer mails to send out some guys. I owe a couple of them to a couple of guys, so I want to get things sent out. Um, but that's the basic overview. I'll give you the other side here. Uh, on this side, you do have two different abilities to adjust. That is your stoppers for operation one and operation two. So this one, when you hear it, that's the operation one stopper. And then this one, as it comes back across, would be the stopper for operation two. If you need adjustment, you can make adjustments with those. I have had to make no adjustments to this whatsoever. Basically, it comes out of the package, take the shipping off. Uh, I've seen a, one or two where people had said this was bent. I had no problems with that. It came out of the package. This screws in, so it's just got a uh, screw on this end. And you got the nut right here. I believe it's 7 16 They tell you snug that so it doesn't bend. That is basically the only thing you have to put on it and then plug it in and she's set to go. Uh, some of the things I've read and seen on uh, cannular in terms of getting the operations and the crimps to work correctly, going through multiple cans, this one out of the box, put the can in, good to go. The first can I did, it was done correctly. I've had one failure and I'm in my third case of cans. The one, I was, excuse me, two failures. Both of them are operation error, nothing to do with the machine. The machine was fine. Uh, the first failure, I left it in this position too long and it actually ran a hole through the seam. So it'd be right here on this outside of that crimp right there. I just apologize about that, it stopped on me. Uh, as I was saying, I ran operation two too long. And it says right in the video, it's a very good job. And I ran a hole through that. The other time I failed was with a can up in this position. Let me see here. And this was closed. It should be back in the zero position. So let's see if I can get it in there. And then when you put the can up in, it actually came up against that operation. So against the number one crimp. And it basically, it bent this portion right here. Again, that's my fault operator error had nothing to do with the canning system itself um, they've got some really good videos on how to use this uh, talk to you about how to practice uh, don't use a can without fluid in it they tell you to the first couple of cans just put water in it cap it practice a few times uh, once you do you know a handful of cans four or five it's like wow this is this is dumb simple very easy to go through so um, thought I'd give you an overview of that 
Um, I'll can up. I've got to can up some cans today to finish my uh, my beer mails anyways. So I thought I'd take you through this. I okay, show you my process. If it works for you, if it's something you're interested in doing for canning, um, hopefully this helps somebody else out. Um, I was thankful to see some some videos when I was looking into this and purchasing this. Um, I'll have a portion here. We'll kind of sit down and talk about pros and cons, the three main ones that are out there. October, obviously, is there. Uh, All American, Can Seamers One, and the Cannular. Those are kind of the three that I really looked into. Um, those are the three most popular that are out there. I'm sure there's probably some other ones, but those are the three that three that I really looked into and really considered when I was going to pull the trigger on this, what I wanted to do. So we'll talk about those and the reasons why I went this direction. So, all right. Well, I hope that helps some people out. I'll get my stuff set up here to do some canning. Uh, other stuff that comes with it, I guess I shouldn't forget that. So uh, food grade lube, obviously the other chuck, a really good uh, manual. One of the manuals, I, I don't know if I've ever seen this before, actual color pictures talk to you about seamings as they go through um, normally it's black and white but it gives you different positions for the operations it's really a well done manual that they they bring with it and then they have youtube videos as well so between the manual and the youtube videos on their site i found it very easy to figure out um, it doesn't take an awful lot of uh, of ability you don't have to be a super handy type of person to be able to go through this and, and really be able to figure it out and it's easy to keep keep clean so I guess I will get things set up here and then kind of take you through that and then talk to you about the, the cleaning and the cleanup, that type of stuff. All right, we'll catch you in a minute. All right, give you a quick kind of rundown of what I use for my system. So I've got a CO2 tank, it's just a five gallon. You could use whatever you've got, but with a splitter, you're gonna need two lines. So one line is gonna come down to the keg. Um, it is running at just one PSI. The other line is gonna come out to your beer gun. Uh, most people are using this. If you're shipping beer at all around, you're using this to, to do that. And you got your CO. It's going to be in there. But you can see the CO2 coming back out of it. Something to get a little bit of overflow. Just happens to be something I was around. A little, uh, a little bit of star sand. So when you're taking the cap off, you can drop it right in that star sand. You got a spot for that to go. Um, so what I'll do is get this kind of set up and then fill the can put the can in the can seamer from October and then we'll seal a can and kind of show you through the process. So I've got these cans are sanitized and I put the caps on them to keep them sanitized at that point just off to the side and then I'll just go through. I'm just doing a small canning run today. Um, I've got Saturday morning, Saturday morning cartoons, a milkshake IPA that Nick Brandon and I did as a collab. It's exit 12 and myself. And then I also have kilt kicker that was Matt at rec brewing and I, another collab we did. So I'm canning up those today to be able to ship them off. And then you're going to get uh, a couple of the other ones that I've got here that I've canned up here over the last uh, week or two. So get some beer mails ready to go out this week. So, um, all right, let me get things set up here and we'll kind of take you through the process. All right. So I'm going to try to do this so I can try to stay out of the way the best I can. So again, this has got star sand in it. Drop that in there. This is in star sand. Give it a CO2. And then we're going to start. Let's see if we can get you filling. Bring this over here. So I typically will bring this right up to uh, foam on top. Try not to have it go overflow too much because it will have a tendency to spin off a little bit. Um, but that uh, purging the can gets the oxygen out, especially with this. This is a NEPA. So We'll get it up to the top here, right about there. I find that that does that. We'll give it a quick hit of CO2. Top sanitized on top of it. Comes in, sets in the chuck. Goes right up in on operation one. Operation two, back to zero, off. And then you've got a can all seamed up, ready to go. And you can take those, wipe them down. Sometimes what I'll do is actually leave it in, and as it's spinning, I'll just run the, the uh, rag around it and just clean it up, and then off to the side. And then I just flip them over like this, and I'll leave them for an hour or two just to double check to make sure I don't have any, any uh, leaks or anything on the edge of this. So, very simple. You can see it's probably, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds for a can to have it seamed up and ready to go. 
Um, I'll let these come to room temperature and then I'll put a label on them, uh, something like this, and I just use paper and then uh, I spray an adhesive on the back of it. So I haven't upgraded to vinyl labels or anything like that. So, all right, that is the process. So we'll go through it. Uh, one other item that might be interested in looking into if you, you get into this is using something along this lines. Um, these are forward locking taps that I have. Uh, this is inner tap. So this actually will screw in right here. And then this becomes a ball lock. And then you can take your um, your liquid disconnect, your liquid ball lock disconnect, click onto that, open the tap, and then just run it out. So you don't have to bring the keg back over here to this side. I've got it just over here on the, the ground. So something to do if you wanted to. Uh, one of the issues I have with that is I don't have the ability to change. I've got six taps back here behind. I don't have the ability to change the PS, uh, PSI on each one of those kegs. Uh, they're not interchangeable, so it's one set. So it's hard to bring it down because I'm running this at a, like a pound or two just to keep the CO2 down in this. Um, so it's not foaming over that type of stuff. So it's not serving pressure basically. So um, again, if you have any questions or anything on how this runs, again, I can't complain at all. Um, I think I did talk a little bit about this in terms of cleaning. So after you're done, um, again, these, just a simple little pin, Pops out. We're gonna work it out a little bit. This guy comes right out. So this whole thing can get lubed. I showed you before. Uh, just pop that off. Got a little fitting in there. This is a washer. So just taking that washer off the ball bearing, clean it up, make sure everything's off of there. Um, any of the residue or anything that's left over, that just pops back on there. Fits back right in. So I'd run a just a little bit of lube across there. Comes right back down into its fitting. Just put the pins back into it, pop it back into the into position, and this other fin comes back out of that same spot, push her through, and then you're right back up into it. So it's just a simple cleaning. Spray this off with a little bit of a uh, little bit of warm water, maybe Dawn, just some light type of stuff or star sand, and I just wipe this down, keep it cleaned up. Um, these rollers right here for the operation one and two, it does say after uh, 500 cans, you're supposed to take these off and the post lube those. Um, I'm into the third box that I'm into. So I'm not quite at 500 cans at that point. I think there's 173 cans in a box. So somewhere in that range of box four or five, I'll have to do that. But so far, no maintenance whatsoever with this. Uh, the only maintenance is, is basically clean this when you're done, take this off, clean that, just get any of the residue or anything left over from the the uh, foam that may overflow and that spins off in that area and then that's pretty much it so very simple just making sure that you leave this in that 12 o'clock position or zero position is another spot they'll call it so it leaves that space in there to put the can back up in and turn it on operation one operation two back to zero turn it off take the can out and you've got canned homebrew so uh love this so far it's been a huge huge improvement to my brewery Especially if you're shipping beer around like I am, um, it makes a big difference not having to worry about can or bottles versus cans in terms of breakage and that type of stuff. So, all right, uh, hopefully that gave somebody uh, some information about this, but that's uh, that's my process as I go through it. All right, guys, I will catch you in a minute. Again, this has nothing to do with the All-American or the cannula not being good systems. I've never used them, so I can't speak to those. Just why I made the decision to go with the system that I went with. So hopefully this is going to help for somebody down the line. If you're interested in, in making this upgrade, um, that it's something that, uh, that would work for your brewery. I've been very, very happy with it. I can't complain at all. Um, it's worked seamlessly right out of the box. Never had an issue. Again, two failures and three cases of cans. So you're talking upwards of 300 plus cans that I've gone through with two failures. And it's my fault. It's not like it's it's the machine's fault. This was a complete screw up on mine because I wasn't paying attention on one and the the lever was in the way. So when this, the can went up in the locking position, um, I screwed that up. And the second one was I left it in operation two too long and I actually wore a a hole into the seam. Again, my fault, not the October canning fault. So if you're kind of in that situation, you're like, you want to make that upgrade. For me, it made a lot of sense to go with October SL1. So if it's, uh, if it's something that you're interested in, again, put your comments in the bottom. I'd answer any questions you have about it. 
Um, but I've been very, very happy. I would buy this again in a heartbeat if I had the, the money to, to spend on something to upgrade. Um, it's been a huge help. I use it for Christmas presents. I put four packs together and hand it out to guys that I, I'm buddies with. Um, I don't have to worry about getting growlers back. I don't have to worry about any of those issues of getting those things back. It's a can. They can take the five cents and return it, and you're good to go. And it's a cool little item to have on your brewery. You can be a little more professional with it. And somewhere down the road, if I end up going pro, which is a, a aspiration that I have, in a few years down the road, I can always use this item, I think, based on what I've had. If I wanted a can beer and professionally be in a situation that I wanted to put, to put that out into the marketplace and sell it, I think this would be perfectly fine to be able to do that. So um, probably not as fast as some of the bigger machines that are out there, but it, when you're looking at it, if it's just me doing it and I'm not looking at spending a ton of money down the road, I think it would work really well for me. So again, these are my opinions just based on what I've gone through. So I hope it helps somebody else out that's looking down the road if you're, you're interested in getting into canning. So, um, Again, any questions, comments, concerns, throw them in the comments below. I will reply to, to what I have. And if it's something that I've dealt with, I will let you know. If it's not, I'll let you know that as well. So hope you guys have a great day. Uh, again, can't say enough good things about uh, the October SL1. Been a great product for me. Love it so far. Uh, again, about 16 months in use and have no issues whatsoever with it. So I don't see any issues going down the line. All right, guys. Hope you, everybody has a great one. And uh, 